The mayor's son is found dead, posed as a scarecrow. Hello and welcome to another edition of Frightfully Forgotten's Trash or Treasure. And today we have another Patreon request. Today we're tackling 1981's Dead Kids, aka Strange Behavior. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Uh, we're drinking Fire in the Sky Rye. Dead Kids or Strange Behavior was directed by Michael Laughlin. Laughlin, Laughlin. <laughs> and he also did uh, Strange Invaders, which was kind of a companion movie to this one. There's supposed to be a third one, but these ones just didn't do that well, so they canned the project. Louise Fletcher is in this, and she is famously in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest as yeah. Nurse Ratchet. Nurse Ratchet! <laughs> I want my cigarettes. <laughs> She's also in our favorite Star Trek series, DS9. Fiona Lewis is in this. She's also in The Fury, which we covered. One of our first Trash or Treasure episodes. That's right. She's also in Inner Space. Dan Shore is in this. He's in Tron. Did anyone see the movie Tron? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and the very acclaimed movie Ghoulies 3. <laughs> Mark McClure is in this, and us 80s kids will always remember him as being Marty McFly's brother in Back to the Future. He was also Jimmy Olsen in the original Superman movies. So the movie starts off these parents getting ready to go out for the night. As soon as they close the door, there's the kid in his room and he starts smoking right <laughs> yeah. away. But he hears a noise in the basement and he goes downstairs to start checking things out. There's a shadow down there, there's somebody down there that just starts killing them, starts stabbing them all up in, in the, the back head, in and the in the head. The head and everything. And you just hear him, oh, 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 and it goes on forever, too. <laughs> I With guess it. you would be if you were stabbed in the head, you'd be all brain damage and everything. You wouldn't be making normal noises, that's for sure. We then get introduced to John and Pete, and they're a father-son duo. They're a little, how do you say it, a little Odd. dysfunctional, I guess. <laughs> Pete just walks by his dad all naked, and like, <laughs> he doesn't bat an eye. Yeah. The dad is all at, at breakfast cutting his nails, like at the table and everything like toenails in the <laughs> kitchen like, like what the fuck do that somewhere else for christ's sake there's people at my work that do that me too like fuck do that shit at home i got a guy at work he cuts his fingernails in the lunchroom and he cuts them into his lunch box what <laughs> what the fuck is the like use the garbage yeah <laughs> the dad gets called away about a missing kid and it turns out that it's the mayor's kid that was attacked in the house. The dad is the cop for the town too, so he goes out to investigate. Pete and his friend Oliver are talking and Oliver is taking these experimental tests. Increases brain power and everything and he takes Pete to the university to show him some demonstrations. A guy on a TV, and they have a chicken on the table, and they strap some thing to a tent. Yeah, some little antenna <laughs> thing into his brain. Turn to the audience, and they show the chicken all <laughs> turning, and lift your right leg. <laughs> his little his chicken leg. <laughs> his feet. So Pete right away gets really interested, and also they give money for these tests, right? Yeah. So Pete wants to make money. He wants to make big bucks. Make the big bucks. <laughs> Wanna make some big bucks. So there's a party going on. It looks like a Halloween party, even though it doesn't feel like Halloween yeah, It's just a costume all. party. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doing that whole dance routine. Big dance routine and everything. <laughs> what the hell? Waldo, he's getting ready to drive his girl home. And he puts the car in gear and the, the car just spins, like the tires are stuck. And when he gets out to go push, he gets attacked by somebody in this weird ghoul type mask. I keep trying to put my finger on what is that supposed to be? I don't know. I'm not but sure. But I've seen that mask around before. I think it's just one of those masks you always see in movies, like on the shelf somewhere. Killer goes around to get the girl, chases her into the pool. There's a big struggle and you think that she's going to drown in the pool, but they actually come out and rescue her and the killer takes off the killer's running away and he stops and kind of looks back and unmasks and you find out it's oliver so pete's dad the next day is questioning all the kids to see what happened at this party asks oliver what did you see and oliver's like wow 
I, don't, I must have blacked out from booze. I don't remember anything. I don't remember none of this happening. Dad gets a phone call and he's got to leave because they found the mayor's son. And the mayor's son is found dead, posed as this scarecrow. Yeah. And it looks really creepy. His eyes are like missing and everything. Pete goes for his first round of tests. He sees all these other experiments happening, like this kid riding this bike and everything. Yeah. And he's rewarded by playing pinball and having a Coke. <laughs> He's about to go in this one room and he gets stopped by this weird old guy. He's like, oh, even we're not allowed to go in there. <laughs> so, you know, something's kind of funny happening behind the scenes. The head doctor of this experiment just simply gives him a pill, tells him to swallow it, and that's it. Yeah. And here's your check. Yeah, yeah. Easy peasy, right? Easy money. He goes out for a date with the receptionist that night, and suddenly he's all smarty speaking French. In the meantime, more of these murders start happening. Pete goes back for a second round of tests. And it's a little different this time. He goes to this strange soundproof room and yeah. there's this chair there and she straps him in all hard and pulls out this big fucking needle. About to put it like into his eye. Yeah, he's, like, he's like, no, oh. no, I don't, I didn't sign up for this. What are you doing? What are you doing? In the meantime, the dad's investigating these murders and he's kind of being led to the university and these weird experiments because something like this has actually happened before in the town. Yeah. And that's where we're going to end the plot. If you want to see how dead kids, a.k.a. strange behavior, Behavior ends watch the movie that'll bring us to the treasure of the movie and uh, one of the treasures is the story of the movie actually is quite good they take their time to really get you invested in what's happening in this town and the way they play it out too it starts off you just think it's gonna be some slasher killer kids movie but then it ends up being like a lot more than that there's way more below the surface on this movie than just dead kids mm -hmm. underlying plot with the dad having a vendetta against this doctor who he thinks killed his wife how many years earlier mm -hmm. and then he doesn't believe the doctor's actually dead and there's this whole convoluted story behind all this stuff which is, makes it a very interesting watch you don't feel like it's too much though the way that the story unfolds it doesn't seem like too much is being thrown at you at once. The town being used too as like sort of ground zero for these experiments. The whole idea of this crazy doctor wanting to like perfect humanity. Yeah. And using this town as a guinea pig. It kind of almost harks back to like the superhuman mm -hmm. that the Nazis wanted to create. It makes for a good story. The characters are really good too actually. They're, they're pretty well defined. You get a real sense of the dynamic between all the characters as well. Like Pete and Oliver. Pete and his dad. Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird dynamic. Then you have the girlfriend, the dad's girlfriend, which you kind of have a sense that She's not really loved by the dad. They're not just kind of throwaway characters. They're there for a reason. The main antagonists in this movie are great, great villains. Mm -hmm. Especially the main female doctor. She's just the way she plays it is great because she's almost too nice. And I was kind of thinking that she was going to be like a robot or something. Oh, she yeah, just, really? The way she plays it out is perfect. The actress really plays a, a, a two faced person very well. The main, main antagonist, the kind of the puppet master behind all this dr lassange he's a great bad guy too you know of course he's in the wheelchair yeah, and everything. Naturally. Like, <laughs> yeah there's a bit of a reveal there too unveils his diabolical plan it's just so classic and, and, and <laughs> yeah. the way the actor delivers it is great yeah the kills in this movie are really good too and they're all kind of different and they're all stylistically different first kill is just shadows mm -hmm. all you see is the shadow of the knife stabbing the kid and then the next kill is a bit more gory, right? And you actually see stabbing and you see the blood. Mm -hmm. And then the third kill is even gorier. So it keeps escalating yeah. in, in the gore, which is, which is neat. They give you just enough for it to be effective without going over the top, right? It keeps its poignancy because they don't oversaturate the movie with all that shit. That one kill with the old woman is just fantastic. Not just the kill itself, it's the whole scene. The way the whole scene plays out is so good. It's, yeah. it's slow, you know, the old woman looking through the house quietly, looks into the bathroom and the kid's all diced up and yeah. missing <laughs> a hand and everything. And then she gets killed in this glorious bloody way. And the music for this is done by Tangerine Dream. Uh, it's pretty
pretty good music, actually. It fits the movie perfectly, really. The small town setting works perfectly for the story of this movie, right? It just makes sense. The scientist guy isn't gonna conduct all these experiments in a huge city with yeah. this huge population. He'll get found out right away. You're kind of stuck in the small town. That's you right. You can't really escape it. Comedy in this movie is good too. It's low key and it's not shoved in your face. It's a little underlying. Yeah. Subtle things like the cop's fridge there mm -hmm. in his office. It's, they open it up and it's just Phil, top to bottom with beer, <laughs> nothing yeah. but beer. That'll bring us to the trash of this movie. I thought the pacing was a little off, a little slow. Not so slow where it's boring, but it's just like a little bit like, oh, okay, let's let's kind of get on with it here. The acting for this movie is, uh, you know, subpar, I guess. Some of it's okay, some of it's subpar, and some of it is god awful. <laughs> yeah. See the distinct line drawn yeah. in the sand there, like, that corner guy uh. is just awful. He's all missing lines. And like, <laughs> Would you like to look at the, the wounds on Waldo? Sort of skipping things. Yeah, you, can, and, you can tell that he's kind of thinking about his yeah. next line and everything. Has what appears to be surgical. In <laughs> and that awful mayor, like uh. when, when the dad runs into the mayor at the supermarket. Look, there was something. Yeah. A bit strange, I thought. Jesus Christ, could have they gotten a worse actor for this guy? He's supposed to be distraught that the sun is missing and all this stuff. And yeah. it's just like any other day at the supermarket. He was just doing his homework when we left. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll call you about six. And the dialogue too in this movie, as good as the story is, the dialogue doesn't really do the story justice. It's a little bad. We back down the drive last night. There was a car parked in front. Is anybody in it? I don't think so. Guess I should have looked. Maybe that's why some of the acting isn't great, because they have to deliver such poor dialogue at times. Right. The actor who plays the dad is kind of weird, because at times he's good, and at times I'm like, fuck, why did they hire this guy? Yeah, yeah. So some performances in the same movie by the same actor go from good to bad even. The budget for this movie too seems a little low, right? It's on the low end. Shows too, right? The costumes, like, man, like, I had no clue that this kid's dad <laughs> was like a cop until like halfway through the movie because like, yeah. well, where's the guy's uniform? <laughs> like, the, he's just wearing plain clothes all the time, like, Where's your badge and your hat and like your outfit? Like I've never yeah. seen a movie before where like the sheriff of the town doesn't have an outfit. It almost seems like everybody on the force is just wearing their clothes. Yeah, regular clothes. yeah, like even his friend there, that old guy, he's kind of in a uniform, but not quite enough yeah. to even show that he's a cop. So like, yeah. and then the coroner too, it's like the coroner looks like he's just about to go cut his grass. Yeah, like or go fishing yeah. or something. <laughs> costume is that? He kind of plays in with the settings a little bit too because like for example that corner's office just looks like the back of like a fucking bait shop or you know something yeah, it like it doesn't look like a, <laughs> it's in a hospital no. or, or anything. Even the police station you can't tell that it's a no, police station. It looks like they just rented a hotel room and like <laughs> took all the furniture out or something. Ooh. Like the end where you're kind of in the the main layer of the scientists, and it just, it just seems like some warehouse where they kind of put a couple of computers here or there or something <laughs> yeah. to make it look like it's like this big laboratory but it's like it's just some fucking loading dock it's a low budget movie but it's always better when you can't tell yeah and in, in this movie you can tell yeah it's like man <laughs> buy these guys some costumes or rent them at least you know yeah you know, have a little more imagination about the settings yeah like christ if we we're gonna shoot a sketch or something we'll at least go down to the party store and spend a couple <laughs> of bucks on a hat or something mm. <laughs> like these guys even bother with that and the last thing we'll have to mention about this movie is the last part about the movie and that's the ending is kind of anticlimactic like they it really builds up to like what you think is going to be a big showdown between mm. the dad and this mad scientist when they finally meet face to face it's kind of a little uh and then suddenly yeah. it's just over and yeah. like well where was the showdown where was the big you know the big epic fight yeah, or and... something you know but it just kind of ends and then there's like a wedding and then the movie's over like what the fuck kind of a weird way to end this movie you know yeah it was 
disappointing. Yeah. You know, yeah, you don't get the payoff that the movie deserved. And it would have been nice if it was a bit of a cliffhanger. Like, even yeah. if it was like a happy ending, and then there's like that hint that, oh, there's still something going on in, in the kid's brain, or something is still mm -hmm. there to be triggered later. So. Dead Kids, a.k.a. Strange Behavior, Trash or Treasure? It is a treasure. It's a definite treasure. I'll have to say treasure, too, for sure. There are some things we picked on, but overall, it's a pretty unique, original movie. Yeah, and it's really not that bad. No. <laughs> it is done really well. Um, and it's a good horror movie. It's got great kills. And it really kind of leans kind of towards sci-fi, too. It's like a sci-fi horror pseudo-slasher. It does make me want to watch its, its sister movie, Strange Invaders. Mm -hmm. Just to see what it's like. With a lot of the same cast, actually. Reminding me a lot of Disturbing Behavior, which came out in the 90s. Uh, I'm sure Disturbing Behavior was inspired by this movie to some degree. Even the title, yeah. Strange Behavior, Disturbing Behavior, is <laughs> right. very similar. Right? <laughs> I got a little bit of a sense of dead and buried yeah. in this movie, too. That small town kind of mind control, puppeteering, yeah. mad scientist. So if you're looking for a neat little low-budget gem sci-fi slasher, definitely check out Strange Behavior, a.k.a. Dead Kids. Yeah, and until next time, Keep drinking.